Flynn, Perry, and John Roca here. It's a big day. It's an especially big day for this guy right here because this is your non-spoiler review of the latest in the Transformers <laughs> series. It is Bumblebee. Basically, this movie is about a younger Bumblebee and his relationship with a young girl named Charlie, played by Haley Steinfeld, and how the two of them grow together. Yeah. Roka, I can't not give this to you first. <laughs> what did you think of this movie? I absolutely loved it. I, you know, I tweeted about it immediately as we got out of the theater, Perry. It was, it was an absolute delight, absolute joy. All the G1 Transformers fans really love this movie because, in essence, it's an extended episode of the old series brought to life. And it's so much fun to see these interesting, fun characters and then see Bumblebee, what he goes through in his journey as well, the way they connect, and just the feeling you have walking out of this that you think the Transformers now has kind of moved into better hands, so to speak. Overall, yes, I enjoy the Guilty Pleasures of the Bay movies, but this is an actual movie that I think will really resonate with a lot of people. And also, not they didn't shy away from the Cybertron stuff, and that was awesome. I was shocked about the Cybertron stuff, yeah. because in some of the Michael Bay movies, that, that material has lost me quicker than anything else. Sure. Here, it immediately hooked me, mm -hmm. and I really can't believe I'm sitting here saying I adored a Transformers <laughs> movie, but I didn't just like this movie, I absolutely loved it. And, you know, when you talk about the action, yes, action mm. can look impressive in a Transformers movie, but what really makes it powerful is when there's that emotional value behind yeah. it. And here, not only does it look good, it's got that reach out and touch mm -hmm. it feeling. And, you know, I didn't play with Transformers like a lot of other people out there, but I did have a few of them. And there's something about the material, specifically on Cybertron, that reminded me oh, of yeah. that feeling of doing the changes and everything. So. I appreciated that, but it was all about the emotion and the connection mm -hmm. uh, between Bumblebee and Charlie and, oh my God, Haley Steinfeld. I think the only thing that took me out of this movie was how good she was. There are certain points in the movie where she's just having a conversation with Bumblebee and I'm watching her and she just purely from her performance mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. through her eyes just conjured emotion through me and I'm sitting there thinking, she's doing that acting opposite nothing. <laughs> it is nuts. Yeah, sitting next to Perry and watching the chair vibrate <laughs> as she is enjoying Haley Stansfield's performance was really something. But also, that's also why you cast a film like this so well. John Ortiz, John Cena, Angela yeah. Bassett, Justin Thoreau, uh, you know, the the entire family, which was great comedic Pamela relief. Pamela Adlon was Pamela excellent. Pamela Adlon, so good as the mom in this. So you do that cast, and then everything kind of takes care of itself if you if you do if you apply that kind of uh, uh, professionalism to the CGI, to the special effects, and they do that through this movie. And I think what Perry hits is the number one thing. This thing has so much heart, and it is perfect for the Christmas season, perfect for the family, and perfect to bring people like our own Dennis Zhang back to the Transformers fold after these Michael Bay movies. I get why people don't like them, so I, and I, but I can also respect why this is such a good Transformers movie. There was one scene in particular where yeah. I almost wasn't able to recover. I was laughing so hard. The jokes here are just on point. Mm -hmm. Again, the emotional value is on point. If I had to nitpick any one thing, it would probably be that there's a couple beats in this that felt a, a little cliche, a yeah. little obvious when those moments pop up. They happen later in the movie, so I'm obviously not going to spoil them here, yeah. but that's pretty much the only thing I think I would criticize. This movie is such a joy, and I, mm -hmm. I don't even want to say this because I don't want to reduce Bumblebee to just a pet, but yeah. it, that boy and his dog vibe, or, or, or a young man in his car kind mm -hmm. of vibe, that really shines through big time, and it just won my heart more so than anything. Yeah, and they set Haley Stanfield up with a really emotional journey and arc that she has to go through, and it, it really carries through the movie very powerfully. And I would say the one nitpick I have is John Cena. At times, it feels like he's a bit not in pace with what's happening in the movie, but I don't know if that's direction or if that's just kind of that wink and a snod type thing that they're trying to do with that character because it is set in the 80s and that kind of behavior from you've seen you've seen in 80s movies. So. I understand where that's coming from. Yeah. The interesting thing about Bumblebee 2 is not only is it set in the 80s, not only does it play with and feature a whole bunch of 80s nostalgia, yeah, your yeah. favorite movie posters, your favorite music, all that kind of stuff. Walkmans. But there's certain beats in the movie that almost feel like they're playing into that style, mm. like they're trying to embrace that style. And while that, that humor that I think his character gives us, yeah. I can understand why it might feel off, but for me it kind of worked. This kind Kind of, you know, where he basically references what the audience could be thinking at a specific moment. Yeah. I, I actually thought that worked pretty well. <laughs> All right, there you All go. All right, score time. All what right. you got for me? Ugh, I, okay, <laughs> this is really tough. Wait, but, wait, what did you give the last Transformers? <laughs> I did, but I wanted, I gave it a Transformers way, an eight, but I give this thing, 
I actually give this thing a legitimate eight because I think there's so much about it that I thoroughly enjoyed. And yeah, a couple of things that keep it from being a 10, but overall eight in terms of what the the uh, the the uh, what it had to do, how it had to bring people back. I think it really accomplished that and just gave you a whole different type of Transformers movie for everyone to enjoy. I can't believe this is happening. I'm giving a Transformers movie a higher score than this guy. What? I'm giving wow. I'm giving it a nine out of ten. Wow! I, I really just like my heart melted. Mm -hmm. I adored this movie. I thought it looked beautiful. I thought Travis Knight directed the crap out of it. Haley Steinfeld, really every member of this ensemble. I was really swept up in this, but I think one of the things that I appreciated more so than anything is, I know it's a running joke how much you love Transformers yeah, and yeah. basically none of us here do anymore. Being able to sit next to you during that theater and sit oh, yeah. there and enjoy something that we've spoken about for so long together, finally, after so many movies, after so many years, like, this is why we need the continuation <laughs> of franchises. Yes, sometimes mm -hmm. you wind up with installments that don't really hit it quite on point, but then you end up with something like this that could have people who don't like it anymore yeah. return, bring in new fans. Yeah. They really did uh, an incredible job, I think, with this movie. So a 9 out of 10 for me. <laughs> that is it. That is our Bumblebee review for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like and share it, and we'll have more reviews for you real soon. Roll out!